Okay, I just want to do a little video today on this uh, this old tiller, little front tine tiller. It's got a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton uh, horizontal shaft engine. Very common engine uh, used on uh, a lot of outdoor equipment, go karts, uh, etc. It's a horizontal shaft uh, where your 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 crankshaft and uh, drive pulley comes out to the side instead of the bottom. Uh, this engine is a uh, date code. Briggs does a date code on their on their engines, and they this one's date code uh, shows that it's a 1979 model. Uh, this engine was built in '79. So if you look at the tiller, it's 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 not much for for today's standards. Uh, this is a chain drive tiller, front tine. Uh, you can see it's got all original paint. It's really, you know, been used probably just a few times in its life Because uh, you can see the original paint here on the tines and where it's worn off rusted here is where it was worn off and they used it and um, it, It's not been abused. It's just old and and uh, It's been sitting up in a, in a garage uh, probably for 25 30 years at least so uh, I was going to see if I could get it running today. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. If I'm going to donate it to someone that, that would like to, to use a tiller that can't afford one. Or uh, I may salvage the engine and, and save it for, for another project like a go-kart or something else. So anyway, uh, we're just going to see if we can get it running after it's been sitting up this long. Uh, since it's been in dry storage that long, it, it, should, it should run. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, first of all, uh, on this engine, since it's been sitting up so long, we want to do a few things. We want to make sure that it has uh, oil in the engine. And on a Briggs and Stratton, the older ones, you just have a little cap here. You can take off a little plastic cap. And then uh, see if there's any oil in the engine. You can just put your finger in there or we can just kind of tip it forward and see if anything comes to the surface, which yes, it does. It uh, looks really clean. So we're gonna let it go like it is. Put the cap back on it. Okay. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna inspect the breather or the air cleaner just to make sure there's nothing has disintegrated there's no rat's nest and just make sure it's not blocked or dirty and as I suspected with this one being so old the uh, the air cleaner insert the foam is pretty it's all still there and intact but it's pretty much disintegrated and if I was to crush this and I'll show you I'll go ahead and do it I'll get a new one it just just falls apart like that it's powder so I'm glad I didn't start and run this engine with that in the shape that it's in because it would have uh, went down into the intake and carburetor and would have caused a lot of issues um, it's, it's clean out here today. It's not dusty or dirty, uh, clean air. It's not gonna hurt to run this engine without that, that little piece of foam there. So I'll just leave this assembly off for right now until I can clean it up and get a new piece of foam. Here's what's left of the air cleaner after I crushed it. And I can crush this and just it's powder. So okay, next. Next I want to check the spark plug. I just want to inspect it, see what it looks like. Uh, and before we try to start the engine, that will help diagnose any kind of issues we're having. Uh, I'm just using the standard uh, spark plug socket. I believe this is a five. Uh, maybe a 1316 on a 
Spark plug actually looks fairly decent. Uh, it's black, it's used, um, it's not all fouled out, it's not carboned up, it's just, uh, I can see the electrode is actually fairly clean uh, from where the engine is ran. So we're going to leave that like it is. You screw that in by hand so you don't cross thread it until it stops, and then just snug it up. Next thing I will say that we will need to do is this uh, the recoil the start the pull start on it uh, seems to be working but it's a little sticky from sitting up so I'm going to spray a little lubricant on that. I'm not sure if this uh, engine has the solid state uh, engine electronics in it, basically electronic ignition, uh, or if it has the points. Uh, sometimes they'll have a, a label on the, the cover, the flywheel cover here, it says magnetron system. This one doesn't have it, so if I had to guess, it probably does have points uh, behind the flywheel. You can convert these old engines to electronic ignition really, really easily for about $25. It may take a few times and some more lubricant to get this, uh, this uh, starter clutch working, but uh, it's, just, it's just needing to be uh, worked because it's been sitting up. Next, I'm going to look at the gas, see if it has any in it, and what the tank looks like. The tank is, uh, is pristine. It's shiny metal, it's clean. I don't see any sediment or trash. It looks brand new inside, it is, it is dry. So let's put a fresh, uh, a little bit of fresh gas in it. That's gonna be about a half of a uh, tank there. Place the cap. This is the cast iron um, L head Briggs and Stratton, if, if that's what you're wondering. The old traditional five horse cast iron engine they made. All right, I'm going to go ahead and actually pour a little gas on this rag right here. Instead of using starter fluid, this is just as effective and a lot safer and better for the engine. Just soak it really good with gas and we'll lay it up on top where the breather would go where it sucks in its, its air. And all there is to do now is, uh, is just pull the rope and try to start the engine. Now, I'm hoping the rope will recoil. If it doesn't, I'll just manually uh, roll it back up. 